Most Wanted. Those two words are more than historic in the Need for Speed namesake. The original release in 2005 has earned itself an almost stratospheric reputation as one of the greatest racing games to ever be released, which, deserved or not, is a question for another day. But on the topic of reputation, Most Wanted 2012. This game has a bit of a notorious reputation among the Need for Speed community, with a lot of it turning into mindless chatter about how this game is humanity's worst crime simply because it isn't Most Wanted 2005 Part 2, instead of taking a critical look at what the game did well and not so well, because there's a lot of both. Now that Most Wanted 2012 is nearing almost a decade old, there is no better time to reanalyze. Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 before I get too into analyzing the game itself, let's go over the largest controversy regarding Most Wanted, the name. All it takes is one look at the Need for Speed fandom and you will hear everywhere that Most Wanted is a marketing lie and a misleading title, and that this game wasn't the game that we were promised. Is that really so? Looking from the initial announcement trailer and description of the game, in Most Wanted, you'll need to outrun cops, outdrive your friends, take down Most Wanted rivals, all while dealing with police hunting you down, and having to use the open world to your advantage to shake them off and at the same time hitting jumps and earning new vehicles to keep you going. This isn't exactly misleading, is it now? That's exactly what the final product is. Even on the game's box art, it's Porsches and Aston Martins. And when you flip the box over, right at the top, in bold letters, it says, the most socially connected racing game ever. This was never marketed to be similar to Most Wanted 2005, and in reality, what reason did people have to expect it to be? The original was directed by Black Box, while development switched to Criterion for 2012. Criterion's last Need for Speed game was Hot Pursuit, and in terms of other series they worked on, that would be Burnout Paradise. So, yeah, where did the idea of an early 2000s style tuner focused game come from? Does 2012 not deserve the most wanted name because it isn't the idealized fantasy of what people imagined? It's stated very clear in its intentions when it comes to becoming the most wanted as well. In single player, you have the most wanted list in which you have 10 rivals to dethrone with the objective of becoming the most wanted in the city. Criticism also gets thrown at 2012 for being somewhat of a love child between Burnout Paradise and Hot Pursuit 2010, both games in which totally suck, right? Oh wait, Never mind, both of those games are highly renowned as some of the most fun racing games of their time. Does Most Wanted 2012 have its issues? Absolutely, and they will most certainly get their spotlight here. But none of them stem from that name on the cover. Ah, Fairhaven. Beautiful, isn't she? Most Wanted's introduction is stunning. Butterflies and hurricanes mixes perfectly with the gorgeous opening shots of Fairhaven's landscapes, which are all yours to explore. Our main objective is given to us from the most robotic non-robot voice since Fuka. The city is home to the most intense street racing on the planet, controlled by 10 drivers, the most wanted. If you want a shot to be noticed by them, you must find cars, compete in as many races as possible, and leave no inch of Fairhaven unexplored. You get dropped into the Aston Martin V12 Vantage, on the route to your first car, the all-new 991 Porsche 911 Carrera S. This is one major complaint about cars in this game from the community. Getting a car as high-end as a 911 should be earned and not given so early. But it's important to keep in mind, however, that this is, after all, the supercar era of Need for Speed where cars like this are still way entry level, considering the endgame cars that are on offer here. Let's stay on this topic of cars here, as I feel that they're done quite well. The list itself is very strong in typical Need for Speed fashion, the latest and greatest sports cars, supercars, and hypercars, alongside some hot hatches and classic cars too. Some cars that are exclusive to most wanted that rarely ever appear in other games show up as well. The Subaru Cosworth Impreza STI, Alfa Romeo 4C Concept, Tesla Roadster, and <coughs> the Range Rover Evo Coupe. Criterion also managed to work some of that Hot Pursuit DNA into making these cars sound absolutely incredible. Speaking of Hot Pursuit, however, let's get into physics. Break to Drift is somehow controversial in this game, which it handles the same as Out Pursuit and everyone loves that game, so I don't see exactly what the issue is. Customization, the biggest buzzword in racing games. Most Wanted does indeed have customization, just not the kind that the tasteless crowd likes. What it lacks in visual customization, it makes up for with the ability to change the character of your car. You can have a focus on on-road performance with track tires and a lightweight chassis and aero body if you're looking for all-out speed, or stick to a reinforced body and reinflatable off-road tires for a more down and dirty approach, which gives you more 
potential to fight against police. And something that rarely gets brought up is how innovative Easy Drive was. You could change each one of these tuning items on the fly, something that was dumbed down and put into the newer Need for Speed games, but it all originated 10 years ago here. Let's dive right back into that campaign, as this is where some of my largest issues with Most Wanted lie. After initial introductory cutscene, there won't be any story moments or characters to meet. As well, there are no characters in Most Wanted. I don't know if this was a result of the game being forced and rushed by EA and Criterion not getting the time that they needed, or if this was some sort of strange stylistic choice, but the end result here is, there are no people in this game just cars. At this point in the game, your only task is taking down each member on the blacklist one-on-one, -on -one, working your way up to the top. To do so, you're gonna need to earn yourself some speed points. Earning speed points can be done multiple ways. You can smash through security gates and billboards while exploring the map, find new cars, get into police chases and rack up a high heat level, or just do the race events for each car. There is a reason I didn't mention the jackpoint system yet and it's because I was saving it for now. Most Wanted lets you choose your own campaign in more ways than I mentioned already, because in order to get all the speed points you need, you're gonna need to find many, many cars. As events are tied to the individual car itself, and you get about five events for each ride. These events consist of your standard races and time trials, but also they include a few unique ones like speed challenges in where you must remain above a certain average speed. As a quick mention on the side, these events each have unique cutscenes to them, and they'll all play during the start of the race. And while I like the creativity of them, there are a few which will definitely make you question your sanity. Now, a large complaint about Most Wanted 2012 is that the progression in this game is poor. While I don't completely disagree, I provide a counter-argument. This game does not ever force you into driving Lamborghinis at the start, like a lot of people will like you to think. Sure, you'll probably find one, but that just means you unlock the jackpoint and the option to use it in the future. The game doesn't immediately spawn you into it and force you to race with it. If you want to work your way up, start in the Ford Focus and Lancia Delta Integrale, and you work your way up to the GT cars and sports cars as you go through the story. Heck, even the Most Wanted list does a good job of starting off slower. And speaking of, let's discuss that Most Wanted list itself. I think it's great. Sure, it's missing characters that egg you on to defeat them, but it gives more personality to the cars themselves by having tailor-made cutscenes to fit each one. The Lexus LFA features a bunch of fibers interloping and fusing together. This is of course representing the carbon fiber tub that was so controversial during the Lexus LFA's story development. The McLaren MP412C, growing from a sterile, icy environment, showing the cleanliness and clinical style the McLaren is famous for, birthing their first road car in decades. The Porsche 918, using blue and yellow lights, mixing together as a hybrid, representing the futuristic outlook of the 918's hybrid power unit. And I think everyone's personal favorite, the Lamborghini Aventador, stored in an aircraft hangar representing the fighter jet-like styling of the car, only to moments in, release the bull. These cinematics are probably my favorite addition to Most Wanted 2012, and it pains me to see the lack of acknowledgement that these get because the attention to detail here is staggering. The Most Wanted races themselves, however, don't really live up to the cinematic wonders of the preceding cutscenes. One-on-one -on -one races with the opposing rival car and a ton of cops on your tail. One feature that was completely ripped from Burnout Paradise was the fact that in order to unlock and drive the Most Wanted cars after you beat them in a race, you must find them in the open world and crash them out in order to unlock their jackpoints. This is, unfortunately, all the campaign really consists of. It's not all that long. And aside from the Most Wanted cars, there are no real objectives. And my largest issue comes with the ending of the game. Once you take down the Koenigsegger R, the final cutscene plays, and you are declared most wanted. It's not really that dramatic, or there's no reward for it, it's just kind of there. Something that also really bothers me is that this final cutscene is literally the game's announcement trailer, just with a different background song and a voiceover. It's a pretty pathetic ending, especially when you realize that the opening cinematic in this final cutscenes are the only ones in the game. Fairhaven, a surprisingly underrated map when it comes to racing games. The city is visually pretty bleak and depressing, which isn't surprising considering it's based off of Boston. But it's a hell of a fun place to drive around. Lots of structures and art pieces scattered throughout are able to be driven on and or jumped off of. And something that doesn't appear often in other open worlds 
There are plenty of parking garages to climb and race through. Why aren't these in more games? The industrial districts also provide you with some inner city rally sections in the midst of construction sites, with storage containers and railroad tracks to spice things up. Oh, and yeah, there's a nuclear power plant. Actually, come to think of it, maybe that was the cause of all the trippy cutscene. On the other side of the city, we have Hughes Park. For me, this is the most memorable location in Fairhaven. I'm a sucker for cherry blossoms, and thankfully they decorate the Airborne Playground, which is the center of this park. I remember spending countless hours doing events in multiplayer back in the PS3 days, in this exact spot. Hodge's Airfield is another one that was a common hangout spot. Abandoned airstrips are always great set pieces in racing games, and the addition of billboards makes this a great spot to get some serious airtime. And of course we have the interstate as well, with some really nice curvy switchbacks, as well as some really long sweeping corners and great straights. The one cohesive thing that brings all of Fairhaven all together is that it all feels designed around high speed. Even this city, while yes, it is grid-like and the streets are really tight, they all flow seamlessly together. And adding on to this, the Hughes Airfield DLC was a masterpiece, apart from the fact that it was just cut from the base game to be added as an expansion later on. Thanks EA. Now before we end, I wanted to go over a few smaller things and then summarize my thoughts on Most Wanted 2012. Firstly, the soundtrack here is masterful. It's all copyrighted so I can't play any of it here, but any soundtrack that has both Dead Mouse and Green Day is bound to be good. The DLC for this game, while yeah, of course it was paid, was fantastic. Really strong new cars, including the mighty Ford Fiesta ST, multiple new Most Wanted rivals, new event types and new customization options for Easy Drive, and of course, Hughes Airport. And also for for a game which is now 10 years old, it still looks fantastic and plays very well. This game aged a hell of a lot better than I can say about a lot of Need for Speeds. My final thoughts on Most Wanted 2012. Is this a bad game? Hell no. Is it one of the best racing games to ever be made? Also no. What it is, is a good game that never had the chance to blossom into something truly great. The bare bones and structure here are fantastic. Good cars, good sounds, good racing, good map. It's just missing that extra... something. That X factor that would have truly made it great. And if EA had given Criterion the time that they needed, imagine what could have been. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you're new here, I would really appreciate your support with a subscription so that you can make sure to see the next time I upload a video. And now until then, have a fantastic rest of your day. I'm sucking pizza. I'm sucking pizza. <laughs>